set up your environment. You can best follow along with the code in this course in a Jupyter Notebook. This way, you'll immediately see your plots and be able to play around with them. You'll also need a working Python environment, including pandas. If you don't have one yet, then you have several options. If you have more ambitious plans, then download the Anaconda distribution. It's huge at about 500 megabytes, but you'll be equipped for most data science work. If you prefer a minimalist setup, then check out the section on installing Miniconda in this real Python course, setting up Python for machine learning on Windows. If you want to go bare bones and stick to pip, then install the libraries discussed in this course with pip install pandas matplotlib. You can also install Jupyter Notebook with pip install Jupyter Lab. If you don't want to do any setup or are working on a system where you can't install these libraries, then follow along in an online Jupyter Notebook trial. Once your environment is set up, you're ready to download a data set. In this video course, you're going to analyze data on college majors originally sourced from the American Community Survey 2010 to 2012 public use microdata sample. It served as the basis for the economic guide to picking a college major featured on the website 538, and it's their GitHub repository where the dataset will be downloaded from. So for most of the rest of the course, the work that you see me doing will be done in a Jupyter notebook. And if you're not familiar, I'm just going to run through how you start this. So once everything is installed, you can run a notebook by typing Jupyter Notebook in the terminal. Note that this will start up a web server and open your browser to allow you to see the notebooks in the current folder. You can create a new one by going to New and picking Python 3 and rename it by clicking the title, which starts out as Untitled, and entering the name that you want the workbook to have. It's important to save your work, and this is done by File, and Save and Checkpoint, or by using the keyboard shortcut which is appropriate for your operating system, shown in the menu on screen. Help is available by pressing H, and as you can see there are lots of shortcuts and it's useful to learn as many of these as you can. The important concept with Jupyter is that there are two modes, there's Command Mode, and there's Edit Mode. In command mode, you control the cells themselves, and in edit mode, you control the contents of those cells, which can be either commands, which are run by the Python interpreter, or markup, which allows you to enter richly formatted text in cells which aren't run by Python. With a cell active, such as this one with the flashing cursor here, you can change into command mode by hitting escape, and change the cell's contents by pressing M to move into markdown mode and Y to move back into code mode. Tab will normally take you back to the cell to enter code, but sometimes you'll need to click in it with the mouse. You can then enter your commands as seen here. If you want to generate a new cell, there are a number of ways of doing so, but the easiest way is to run the code in the final cell and create a new one at the same time by pressing shift and tapping enter. That runs the current cell and you can see the number 2 appears next to it to show that's the second cell that's been run. And a new cell is ready underneath where you can enter some more commands and run them. You should be able to run all of the code in this course using just these few shortcuts, but if you want to learn more, RealPython has got you covered with this course on using Jupyter Notebooks. So the first step here is to import pandas with the traditional alias of pd, create the download URL variable, and then create a data frame with this command here. We can see when we type type of the data frame we can see it's a pandas data frame. By calling read CSV, you create a data frame, the main data structure used in pandas. You can follow along with this course even if you aren't familiar with data frames, but if you're interested in learning more about working with pandas and data frames, then you can check out using pandas and Python to explore your data set, 
and the Pandas data frame make working with data delightful. Now that you have a data frame, you can take a look at the data. First, you should configure the display.max.columns option to make sure Pandas doesn't hide any columns. Then you can view the first few rows of the data with the head method. So here you can see the option of display max columns is being set to none, so none of the columns will be hidden. And this is a method you'll get extremely familiar with, head. It displays the first five rows of the data frame by default, and your output should look something like this. By default, head displays five rows, but you can specify any number of rows as an argument. Here you can see what happens when you use df.head10. Now that you have your environment set up and the data source imported into Pandas, you're ready to create your first plot. Create your first Pandas plot. Your dataset contains some columns related to the earnings of graduates in each major. Median is the median earnings of full-time year-round workers. P25 is the 25th percentile of earnings. P75 is the 75th percentile of earnings. And rank is the major's rank by median earnings. Let's start with a plot displaying these columns. First, you need to set up your Jupyter Notebook to display plots with the matplotlib magic command. The matplotlib magic command sets up your Jupyter Notebook for displaying plots with matplotlib. The standard matplotlib graphics backend is used by default, and your plots will be displayed in a separate window. Note that you can change the matplotlib backend by passing an argument to the matplotlib magic command. For example, the inline backend is popular for Jupyter Notebooks because it displays the plot in the notebook itself, immediately below the cell that creates the plot. There are a number of other backends available. For more information, check out the rich outputs tutorial in the IPython documentation. Now you're ready to make your first plot. You can do so with the plot method. Plot returns a line graph containing data from every row in the data frame. The x-axis values represent the rank of each institution, and the p25th, median, and p75th values are plotted on the y-axis. If you're not following along in a Jupyter Notebook or an IPython shell, then you'll need to use the PyPlot interface from matplotlib to display the plot. Here's how to show the figure in a standard Python shell. Notice that you must first import the PyPlot module from matplotlib before calling plt.show to display the plot. Regardless of the method used to create the plot, it looks like this. Looking at it, you can make the following observations. The median income decreases as rank decreases. This is expected because the rank is determined by the median income. Some majors have large gaps between the 25th and 75th percentiles. People with these degrees may earn significantly less or significantly more than the median income. Other majors have very small gaps between the 25th and 75th percentiles. People with these degrees earn salaries very close to the median income. This first plot already hints that there's a lot more to discover in the data. Some majors have a wide range of earnings and others have a rather narrow range. To discover these differences, you'll use several other types of plots. For an introduction to medians, percentiles, and other statistics, check out RealPython's Python Statistics Fundamentals How to Describe Your Data course. Plot has several optional parameters. Most notably, the kind parameter accepts 11 different string values and determines which kind of plot you'll create. Area is for area plots. Bar is for vertical bar charts. Bar H is for horizontal bar charts. Box is for box plots. Hexbin is for hexbin plots. 
HIST is for histograms. KDE is for kernel density estimate charts. Density is an alias for KDE. Line is for line graphs. Pi is for pie charts. And scatter is for scatter plots. The default value is line. Line graphs, like the one you've created above, provide a good overview of your data and you can use them to detect general trends. They rarely provide sophisticated insight, but they can give you clues as to where to zoom in. If you don't provide a parameter to plot, then it creates a line plot with the index on the x-axis and all the numeric columns on the y-axis. While this is a useful default for datasets with only a few columns, for the college major's dataset and its several numeric columns, it looks like quite a mess. As an alternative to passing strings to the kind parameter of plot, data frame objects have several methods that you can use to create the various kinds of plots you've just seen. Area, bar, bar h, box, hex bin, hist, KDE, density, line, pi, and scatter. In this video course, you'll use the plot interface and pass strings to the kind parameter, but you're encouraged to try out the other methods mentioned here as well. Now that you've created your first pandas plot, let's take a closer look at how plot works.